And our last speaker for today is Pastor Tobe Nadoze. Pastor Tobe pastors a young adult church called the Faith Church of DLBC, popularly known as Faith Tribe. He is an alumni of various business schools and holds masters in business administration from Bangor University, Wales, where he concentrated on finance and risk management. He holds a master's in information technology and applied physics, electronics from the University of Lagos. He is a Prince II practitioner, practitioner and an ISO 27000 lead author, auditor. He has attended several leadership courses and facilitated many others across the world. He has also been a panelist on glo various global, regional, and country-based workshops and seminars. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause as I present you a, fa a leader, a father, a mentor of the tribe that moves with faith, a father who calls my gender daughters and the other gender sons, a mentor who grooms, trains his own in every area, a shepherd who protects his sheep on his knees. I present to you Pastor Tobin Nadoze, popularly known as P.T. Praise the Lord. I'm excited to be in your midst. Let's give a round of applause to Jesus, who has given us the opportunity to have this fellowship. And um, I, I was listening to Dr. Ayo. I think after listening to him, we should just say the grace and go home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Dr. Ayo, it's great to, to, to be with you. We've been together since 1995 or 96. We've been together since 95. We've been ministering in this church together from then. And by the grace of God, we are still ministering together now. And um, it's a great privilege to be with you. And um, dearly beloved Pastor Femi, I think this is the first time we are meeting physically. Um, Pastor Folayo is with me. This is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased, and I'm excited to be here. Of course, I have my faith tribers here. When I was coming here, they insisted they must come with me. And um, I want to thank every one of them. Um, not only that, the church also, we have two services. Uh, so the second service of the church, they are connected live here to listen to the message. So I took the first service. And when I said I was coming here, they said they want to connect to the brethren here. So um, those of you over there, back home, um, I'm in a wonderful church. It's almost as if we should relocate to this place. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. I say the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. While I wait to just get a feedback from them back home to be sure the media is fine, I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands from, from the, the moment, moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord, again. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head One more time I will sing Of the goodness of God I love you Lord again I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing. Of the goodness, I love your of voice. God. I love your voice. You have led me to the fire in 
darkest night You were close like no other I know you as a father I know you as a friend I will sing in the goodness I love your voice against of God Oh, oh I love I your voice And this morning, His goodness will run after you. Just worship Him this morning. Lift up your voice and worship Him. Oh, worship the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the God that fights our battles. He's the one who is there for us. Worship Him who speaks and the earth must keep silent. Oh, worship Him this morning. Worship Him this morning. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I'm here. I'm here under this atmosphere of your anointing. I'm not living here the way I came. I'm here under the atmosphere of your anointing. There must be a change. I'm here under the atmosphere of your anointing. There must be evidence that I'm serving the able God. Oh, Lord, touch me this morning. Lord, touch me this morning. Touch me this morning. Touch me this morning. Are there battles you are fighting that you need the able God this morning? He's going to rise for you. He's going to rise for you. Oh, Lord. Lord, I ask this morning, 
Let there be a release of your presence and your power in the lives of your people. I don't know what they came here with today. But Lord, they are living here with your power. And every battle anyone is involved in. Every battle where they have been set aside. Every battle where your children have been set out. This morning, this morning, this morning, able God speak for your children. Speak for your children. Put confusion in the camp of the enemies that are camped up against them. Everywhere where a decision is about to be made. I ask that your name that speaks better things than that of Abel will arise for your children. May they be favored. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I thank you. And this morning, I ask, Father, in this place, let there be enlargement. I ask, Father, in this place, whatsoever revelation your children will need, that will create the right type of intervention to take them to the place you have assigned for them. I ask that let there be revelations in the name of Jesus. Lord, speak to us and bless us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Turn to your neighbor and say, welcome to church. If your neighbor is not smiling, turn to a neighbor who is smiling and say, welcome to church. And what I always tell them in church, if you don't have any neighbor that is smiling, just look forward. I'll be smiling at you. Welcome to church. Praise the Lord. The psalmist says, I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. This month in church, we're going through a series which we have titled, The Able God. And we've seen God move in different ways. And we've been going through the book of Daniel. And this morning in church, as we looked at Daniel chapter 2, we looked at the confusion of contenders that signposts your conquest. In Daniel chapter 2, Daniel had been sidelined. Daniel, with all the anointing he carried. Daniel, with all the grace that was upon him, had been sidelined. And the king had a dream. And when the king had that dream, they did not call Daniel. Oh. Did you read it in Daniel chapter 2? I was shocked. He was one of the great men in the land. They had trained him. But some people had etched Daniel out of power. The Bible says, <laughs> eventually, confusion came into their midst. They did not call Daniel. The king now called all the magicians and all the Chaldeans. I said, I have a dream. He did not tell them to tell him the dream. He said, interpret the dream for me. And the people said, ah, king, ah, he will like me, he will let you. I hope you are not having a problem. They said, king, tell us the dream. Then we, as men of wisdom, will tell you the interpretation. The dream said, ah. I said, I cannot Remember the dream. Jimmy, you said you are magicians. Jimmy, you said you have a God. Tell me the dream. Then tell me the interpretation. You want to play smart on me? All the people that were sitting around the king, that were men of power, confusion came into their midst. And the king was so angry, and he said they should go and kill all of them. And Daniel, that they had set aside, when it was time to go and kill all of them, they went to look for Daniel. They said, Daniel, King said we should kill everybody. Then they said, but I was not there. When the king was calling people, they said, it doesn't matter. You are going to be among those to be killed. Confusion came into their midst. Daniel went there and said, ah. <laughs> the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Daniel said, well, I have a God in heaven that reveals secrets. That confusion Meet Daniel that had been set aside to be brought to the center place of the palace. And all the people who were about to be killed, all the great men in the land, as they gathered, and they said, I have someone who I can talk to. That was part one. We now come to part two. And today, I'm going to be speaking to you on part two of that passage. 
and I'm going to be speaking to you on divine revelation for definite interventions. Divine revelation for definite interventions. Daniel chapter 2 and in verse 17. Uh, Daniel chapter 2 and in verse 17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. They brought them to perish. But they didn't know. They were announcing that the God of Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego was alive. The God of all those other great men were dead. People that pushed them aside were the ones that brought them to the palace. I pray for someone hearing the sound of my voice this morning. Where people have set you aside because they think you don't have any oil or anointing on your head. May the Lord speak for you today. Confusion came into their midst. Eventually they brought their name. We sang one Yoruba song. I don't know why I'm liking Yoruba songs today. Maybe because I'm married to a Yoruba woman. <laughs> Very lovely woman. I'm not, I'm not reading uh, Dr. Ayo. He likes complimenting his wife. I'm learning from him. So, very lovely woman. Go on, go on. Don't check her out. It's for me to check her out. Just accept my verdict. Because my verdict is 100%. We sang one song in church today. And that song resonates to what happened in Daniel chapter 2. Boshima Shenye. Boshima Shenye. Oma Seru Doba. Oma Seru Doba. Three times. Oh, the Daniel that they set aside, the Daniel that they did not call, when they think they call all the great magicians in the land, the Daniel that when the king needed an interpretation and a revelation, they did not call, was the same Daniel that came before the king. I said, king, the sword of death over all these people, suspend it, I have the interpretation. And suddenly, all the people that set Daniel aside, their lives were in the hand of Daniel. It's only God that can do that. Then finally, even the king himself was worried. So the king's life was in the hand of Daniel. Oh, I pray for you. Are there strong men that have been making noise where you are? I ask that after the ministration today, may they bow before you. So everybody was quiet and Daniel had his friends and they went and they prayed and after they finished praying in Daniel chapter 2 suddenly Bible says in verse 19 then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision that revelation that will maximize the opportunity before you I pray you will get that revelation you know God knows how he does his things. I have learned not to get into God's business for him. I do what he wants me to do. When this confusion came up in their midst, you know some of us, if we want to pray, we say, oh Lord, please the confusion that has come in the midst of these people, cancel the confusion. Daniel did not get involved in the confusion. The confusion was orchestrated to celebrate Daniel. But something happened. In the book of Esther. He 
man was the vice uh, <laughs> vice king he was the head of all the people in the place I don't know if you read it in the book of Esther then one day the king called a man and said hey man what should I do to the person I want to celebrate the most a man came and said king because he thought it was him and he outlined all the things that will make the people know in that land that this is the next to the king. The king said, do the same thing to Mordecai. You know, some of us, we come there and we say, ah, king, this is too much. Ah, why are you going to put me in your chariot? And be, ah, I used to be like that too. But I have learned. When God puts confusion in the midst of some people, it's for a reason. No, 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 no. Don't put yourself down. Don't be like me. I suffered. One day, in the office, years, years back, the MD said, oh, go and buy a land cruiser for Tobey. And they bought a very beautiful land cruiser, brand new. And they brought it. And you know, they called me, come and pick your land cruiser. And I was driving a Prado, which was a good vehicle. And I went there and I saw the land cruiser. Then I went to church. I said, ah, how am I going to carry land cruiser to church? I'm driving the Prado. I went back. I said, sir, I don't want the Land Cruiser. He said, but you have been promoted. Not just promoted. You have been assigned to be an executive director of a bank. This is the list of offers. In fact, he said, if you even want escorts, with the uh, double, let's see. I said, I said I'm, not, I'm not rich that level. They packed the Land Cruiser. I refused to call. That was there, no. <laughs> don't try it now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my faith drivers will not even allow me to rest. They'll be like, a ah, pity. You know, these faith drivers, they are pushing me. But I thank God, though, they are opening my eyes on new things. I rejected the land cruiser. My friends called me and said, Ah, to be what is wrong with you? I said, eh. it, will, it will make me shout too much, shout too much. <laughs> Shouting has just started. Now, I said, It will make me shout. I rejected the land cruiser. I rejected the land cruiser. And later on, when I suffered for it, when eventually my colleagues were being given another vehicle, I was just stepping to the land cruiser level when my colleagues were moving out of land cruiser level. But I said that was past. Never again. Stop fighting God's battle for God. When he does certain things, let it be. He will just... You know what Daniel did? When they gathered those people to kill them, Daniel didn't get involved. He said, that's not my battle. My battle is to get the revelation that will create an intervention. And eventually, it happened. When you have divine revelation, it does seven things. Number one, it exposes. It exposes the weakness of those who you think are strong men. It exposes. The prophets of Baal had been making noise in Israel. And when they were making noise, one day, <laughs> something happened. Ah. God said, Elijah, today is today. Elijah called them, called all the people together. Because of revelation. The inefficacy of the idols of Baal was exposed to the land. Number two, it elevates divine revelation. It takes you to pedestrians you never knew you would get to. You know, some years back, I was walking in a place, and one day the system went down across the entire world. I was walking in a bank, very, very prominent bank. You all know the bank. And before that, they had told me, oh, and you need this type of skill to handle this level of automation in this um, bank. So one day, the entire platforms, channels of the entire bank went down. And when it went down, they called all the experts. The experts came. And when the experts came, the experts looked at it. They, they didn't find a solution. And so they said they were going to bring in people from South Africa to come and look at the platform. And while they were on their way, revelation came. I pray God will give you a revelation. And something just said, go to the server. And because they had brought in all the experts, 
But then I was still young in my career. I was not among the experts that were checking the system. But I just heard the voice, go to the server. And who am I to disobey? After all, the system was down. If I do anything, it wasn't going to spoil anything. So I went to the server. And something said, click on this service. When I moved the mouse, I clicked on the service. It said, restart this service. And the service that I was being led to restart wasn't a normal service, those who know IT, that should bring up the channels. Say said, restart this service. And I restarted the service. And the cards started working. POS started working. ATM started working. The MD of the bank, the MD, all of them were there. Nothing would work. They said, let's go and fly. Private jets. All of them were still there. Everything started coming up. They went to the ATM and paid. They called this one in this country. It was working. They called. They said, who did it? Yours truly. <laughs> Revelation. It elevates. Me that was not known before in that organization. Everybody knew my name. Eventually, my boss called me and said, see, we've just had a meeting. You are going to take over the responsibility of your boss. We are moving your boss somewhere. After all, he couldn't solve the problem when the problem was there. You have to wonder solve the problem. I did not help my boss, so let them look for another opportunity for him. But just one single revelation. And from that day till today, anyone who remembers that instance, that was what moved me from being regular in the tech industry to being premium. From that day till today, I have never worked in any organization that I earn the same pay with those on my level. I'm always earning more than those who are on the same level. One revelation that elevates. I pray for someone hearing the sound of my voice this morning. The revelation that will elevate you to a place of premium. I pray that divine revelation will come your way. Daniel that they had set aside. Daniel that nobody wanted to talk about. Suddenly, the life of everybody, the prosperity of the kingdom of Babylon was in the hand of Daniel. And the Lord gave the revelation to Daniel. May you get your own revelation. Number three, revelations establish. It establishes. If you want to be established in your place, be a man of vision. And one way to get vision is divine revelation. Number four, revelation examines. There are times that things are happening and you cannot understand. When you get divine revelation, it tries those things and see whether they are number four. Revelation eliminates. It eliminates a lot of things. You see, for Daniel, the competition was eliminated as a result of revelation. In Daniel chapter 6, this is Daniel. When I get to heaven, I'm going to look for Daniel though. In Daniel chapter 2, imagine all the magicians of the land, they all bowed to Daniel. Which gave rise. Because from that chapter 2, Daniel became premium. Eventually in chapter 6, when he became a president, they said you cannot be a regular president. He became the head of the president. Did you read it in your Bible? Premium. And in that chapter 6, again, they wanted to hack him down. The people that wanted to hack him down, revelation eliminated all of them. When they were thrown into the same lion's den, the Bible says before they got to the pit of the den, they were destroyed. I pray the revelation that will eliminate the competition that is choking you. May that revelation come your way. Revelation, revelation. Revelation extends and finally revelation empowers. I would see brother Daniel by the grace of God. Just imagine after the revelation, how do you think Daniel will be walking? And he's walking, walking like a big boy. If you don't know how to bounce, go and learn how to walk well. I didn't say you should go and learn how to bounce, learn how to walk well. Walking in defeat has to be a thing of the past. Walking in defeat has to be a thing of the past. You know, one of my amazing daughters in faith, in her family, they looked down on her because they were looking. What good can come out of her? The one day she came, she was weeping. 
And I said, see, come down with us and God will do you good. It's like, pastor, things are too tough. I said, uh -uh. Go and shake yourself from the dust. Arise, thou that sleepest. And we prayed. Something happened. One day, her father called me. Her father said, pastor, your daughter says she's traveling to America. I'm not going to allow her to travel. I said, sir, why? He said, nobody in her family has traveled to America before. I said, she's going to be the pace setter. He said, how is she survive? I said, don't worry. She's a daughter of faith. When she gets there, she will survive. The person that they cast out in the family became a pace setter. Did not only get scholarship and a job. Now, her siblings are following after her. And suddenly, the father called me the other day. He said, ah, I don't know what you are doing, no, but I like it. Ah, listen to me. When they have set you aside, they've not seen anything good in you. At the end of the prayer today, God will speak for you in the name of Jesus. My time is almost up. But as you look at this revelation, you see the importance of partners at the place of refuge. It's instructive that Daniel had people to call. In Daniel chapter 2, in verse 17, he went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, his companions. Who are your companions at the place of prayer? Who are the people you associate with that when push comes to shove will be able to stand with you at the place of prayer? Importance of partners at the place of prayer. See, the safe of perspective. He had a place where he could go safely. He had partners in the secret place. He made it known to them. You know, I love reading 2 Samuel chapter 23 as it talks about the strong men of David. You know, the Bible says that some of the strong men of David, David said he wanted to drink water. That place, my people know. My people were asking for the dumb moments. One of your dumb moments. You know what they call the dumb moment? You don't know. Ah, you are meant to be young people now. How can I know you don't know? You don't know what they call the dumb moment? Ah, John, come here, please. Help me tell them after service. The dumb moment. The passage in the Bible that you will read, you'll be like, ah, ah, I have many. But one of my dumb moments, is this second Samuel chapter 23. David said he wanted to drink water. And when he said he wanted to drink water, three of his strong men, people that said, David, there's nothing you need. We are ready to pay the price with you. If it's prayer, we would pray. Anything we would do. And David said, the water I want to drink is in the middle of the Philistines. Guess what those people did? Though? They took their sword. <laughs> they started going to the well. And the Philistines were like, are you people normal? Are you aware this is our territory? They said, David wants to drink water. He must drink the water. They started killing and killing and killing and killing. And they got to the well. They fetched the water. This is the dumb part. After they got the water for David, they did not throw away the water. So that means, out of the three of them, one held the water gently. David must drink water. David must drink water. The other two was busy killing the Philistines. Killing the Philistines. And as the Philistines were coming, bah, 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 bah. my children know how to explain it well. I don't know how many Philistines they killed. Then they now brought the water and said, David, this is the water you want to drink. Even David himself, he looked at the water. He looked at the number of Philistines that had been killed. He said, ah, ah, ah. I was just joking. Why did you take it seriously? Anything that concerns your life, David, we don't joke with it. Who are the people you have? Who are partners? Who, when there is need to get to the secret place of prayer, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will go and tarry with you. There are times that the revelation is released when you and your partners can come together to pray. Importunity in prayers. We see something that happened in verse 19. It says, the secret was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Some people like sleeping. You can't even be great if you don't know how to burn the midnight candle. Not even spiritually alone. Go and ask anyone who has achieved greatness. How are you able to leave your comfort zone? There are certain revelations that cannot be gotten at your comfort zone. There are certain things that you cannot achieve staying at your comfort. The Lord said to the children of Israel, you have stayed too long on this mountain. Importunity. How are you able? I was telling them in church this morning, I said, see, there are times that you don't go into negotiation with human agents. 
you go to the secret place of prayer, you settle it. The Bible says the heart of kings are in the hands of the Lord. You come out to the open human environment. They have no option but to comply. If you want to receive revelation, you have to be a man or a woman who is able to spend time in prayer. Who is able to endure hardness in 2 Timothy chapter 2. He says, endure hardness. If you want to connect to the revealer of secrets beyond human comprehension, you have to learn to be able to stay at the place of prayer. Finally, the impact of the pure with the power of revelation. Revelation opens doors for you. I've told you that already. Eventually, in Daniel chapter 2, in verse 24, he says, Daniel went into Ariok, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men. He went in and said, destroy not the wise men. Look at the boldness of people that don't know their God. If you want to be bold, be a man that gets revelation. You know, when I was younger, rascality, don't do it. Oh. <laughs> Rascal. We're going to a school fellowship to go and minister. And when we're going to a school fellowship to go and minister, the prayer warriors, we had prepared. DLSO, we had prepared. I remember that school, State High School, Alimosho. And when we prepared, the Lord just opened our eyes. And we started seeing some powers in that school. And when you can see something, it means you can fight it. When you can't see, you cannot fight. If you don't have a revelation, it's difficult to intervene. Revelation leads to intervention. And so when we were walking to the school, one security man wanted to stop us. <laughs> one of us just said, security man, do you know how many witches have passed beside you? The man said, ah, witches. He said, yes, that girl coming is a witch. And you know, security man was like, what is wrong with all this? We're still young, oh, don't do it oh, wrong. I said, spiritual rascality. Just to show him that power passed power. And so, we just said, okay, you young lady, that demon. Get, and the young lady said, manifesting. What do you think happened to the security man that wanted to stop us? The man ran away. And they opened the gate. And we just entered. We're marching in. Don't do it, oh. It's uh, spiritual rascality. We're still young. We're not mature. And we went into that school and we did school fellowship. I remember one of the times we went for fellowship. Some people said they were not going to come to fellowship. And all these people, you just do revival, revival, revival. And when we're doing the revival, we said, don't come. Just stay around. And I remember some of the young guys came. And when they were there, when we started deliverance, I was the one leading the prayer that the spiritual rascality, you know. But just to try and explain to you the boldness of the people that know their God. Then I just got the revelation that some of the guys there, their girlfriends were inside the fellowship, but they were outside. I just said, oh, some of you, you are watching. Your girlfriends are here. They are in Coven, so, and they have used you at the Coven. Get ready. Just watch. I just said, Father, let this place become very hot now. All those who have no contrary past, belonging to Coven, so, let this place become hot. They were watching. Their girlfriends started jumping like this. They started screaming. What do you think happened? When their girlfriends started manifesting, ha, one tap the other. Is that not your babe? Say, ah, ah, yes, so. Say, oh, God, you don't go. She has used you. <laughs> The other one said, hey! The following Sunday, the fellowship was full. There was no space inside. People were outside. Revelation. The boldness of the people that don't know their God. I was transferred to a new district. You need to know God and get revelation. I was transferred to a new district. And some of the pastors that be in that district, one day they called me and they said, Pastor, you are very young. You are a very small boy. In this place, some of us have paid with our blood to build this church. So, we don't know why they made a district pastor. You are too young to be a district pastor. And um, they've sent you here now. I, I went to meet my group pastor. I said, group pastor, you know I didn't want to be a district pastor. Just leave me alone. I'm fine with my DLS or student rep. I've been doing it. I'm fine. Students, we don't fight each other. We don't just help each other. He said, no, you are going to that district. He said, I know why I sent you. I said, I don't want trouble. Though. He said, go there. So I went to the district. They called me again. I called workers meeting. One of them stood in the workers meeting and said, you're a small boy. Revelation. Boldness of the people that didn't know that God. Meanwhile, I had been praying. And the Lord had been revealing things to me. I called workers meeting. One of the pastors stood up and said, you, I've told you. Anytime you need to take a decision, come and speak to me. 
and you are not speaking to me. I said, it's okay. I was praying. When the revelation was complete, one Sunday I collapsed all the location. I said, we're having combined district service on a Sunday. When they came, I brought out my Bible. I said, see, you know the Bible. Some of you have been in this church since the 70s. It's not speaking the Bible. It's a time of revelation and anointing. I said, everybody close your eyes. I said, there are some of you who have been here for so long. This is what you have been doing. Now let the Lord begin to expose you. Sunday service. The man that told me, Pastor, I will have paid with our blood. His wife started screaming. The man opened his eyes. I said, everybody, close your eyes. He said, is that not the voice of my wife? Ruben Coordinator ran to come and meet him. He said, Pastor, can you take it easy? I said, Ruben Coordinator, you better go and sit down and be praying. I said, go and sit down and be praying. The wife of the man that challenged me, she almost entered into the gutter. She was just running. I said, they should leave her alone. When you have revelation, you are bold. I pray you will get revelation. There are certain battles you should not be involved in. Because when you get revelation, those that know you have the revelation, they will not stand before you. The reason why people are standing before you to make you uncomfortable is because the revelation has not come. But today, the revelation will come. Daniel had revelation. He went to meet the king. He said, king, don't kill anybody. I'm here. I pray you will be able to stand in the gap for your generation. The blessedness of the people that work with God and the breakthrough eventually interpreted the dream. I love this passage in 2 Kings chapter 8 in verse chapter 6 in verse 8. The king of Syria was fighting the children of Israel. And when he was fighting the children of Israel in 2 Kings chapter 6 and in verse 8, he warred against Israel. And he took counsel with his servants. And he said, this is where we are going to stay and destroy the king of Israel. And Elisha, <laughs> Elisha called the king of Israel. Don't go there. The king of Syria has just planned. Ha, then that one spot. Then the king of Syria said, okay, this one, we are not going to tell so many people. Let us tell a few people. And Elisha called the king of Israel. I said, Don't go there. The king of Syria has just done this. King of Syria now said, I'm not going to tell anybody. I'll just have the plan in my head. And when it's time to implement it, I will implement. And as he was carrying the plan in his head to go and implement, Daniel called the king of Israel. He said, no, don't go there. Ah, king of Syria said, ah, who is revealing all the secrets? They said, there is a man in the land whose God reveals secrets to Eventually, he went to challenge him. And when he came there, you remember the story? Gehazi was afraid. Elisha said, the revealer of secret is able to help us to stand in the gap. Greater are they with us than they are with them. He said, Lord, open his eyes. Let there be a revelation. When the revelation happened, Gehazi said, eh? So we have so many people like this. Gehazi was, eh? Who do you say you are looking for? Even Elisha that said, Lord, open his eyes, did not make so much. Revelation makes you bold. It blesses you. It gives breakthrough. And this morning, Welcome to divine revelations that will give you definite intervention. Rise up upon your feet and just begin to go to the Lord and pray. And tell the Lord, Lord, for this race ahead of me, I need revelations. I don't know where you are in your life's journey. I don't know what you are facing this morning. But I know the God that revealed secrets to Daniel in a night vision is still here. He's still revealing secrets. Just go to him in prayer and say, Lord, this morning, you the revealer of secrets. I need your help. I need you by my side. Are there people in the house praying this morning? Tell the Lord, Lord, I'm tired of fighting without a vision. I'm tired of fighting without a revelation. Give me the revelation that will lead to an intervention. Give me the revelation that will position me where I should be. Give me the revelation. And if you are far from God this morning, you want to tell the Lord, Lord, I have discovered I cannot continue on this journey without you. You come to him this morning and say, Lord, I want to walk with you. I want to live with you. I want to live with you. If you know you are far from God, quickly, quickly come to him. Quickly, quickly settle your score with him. Settle your score with him. Everyone connected, if you know that you are far from God, 
this morning to settle that with God. And if you know you are a Christian, how far are you from the altar where there is the God in heaven that still reveals secrets? You want to come to him this morning and say, Lord, I'm going to be at the altar where I will connect to you. I'm going to stay at the altar where I'm going to have intervention. Speak to the Lord this morning. Is there a world that needs a revelation? Is there a challenge that needs a revelation? I told you, when there is a divine revelation, there will be definite no interventions. No this morning, tell the Lord, Open Lord, I'm here. Lord, I'm here. Lord, I'm here. Let I want to commit to the source of life. I want to commit to the source of life. The one who can open, the one who can reveal what is there, the one who can empower, the one who can strengthen, the one who can enlarge, the one who can extend. Are you fighting the battle that you need all this attention? This morning, this morning, you can connect. You can connect. You can connect. Begin to grow within your spirit and say, I am tired of my spirit. I am tired. I'm tired of walking without revelation. I'm tired of walking without going Let this morning, let there be something within you. It's a deep cause of the deep. Deep cause of the deep. Let deep cause of the deep. Cause of the deep. Let deep let there be this irrevelation of the spot. Everything that has locked you down. Everything that has hindered you. They must be broken. So that you can stay in your place. Your place is not to be sidelined. Your place is not to be eliminated. Your place is not to be removed. How far are you from your place of honor? How far are you from your place of refuge? How far are you? Come back this morning. Come back this morning. Come back this morning. Come back this morning. Why don't you say, Lord, I'm going to stay at the altar until there is a connection. I'm going to stay at the altar until there is a connection. I don't want to go blindsided into this battle anymore. I don't know what is happening to me. I don't want to remain in this position where there is no understanding of what is happening. Stay at the altar and connect to the spirit this morning. Stay at the altar and let there be a connection this morning. Yes, I told you, Open my eyes. when there is a revelation, there is boldness. You see Jesus. When there is revelation, there is victory. When there is revelation, there is blessedness. Holy Ghost. You are where you are because you don't have the revelation. And you cannot remain there. You cannot remain there. You cannot remain there. Everything that needs to be exposed this morning. Open my eyes. Every power that needs to be exposed this morning. Every strong man that needs to be exposed this morning. Revelation will expose. Revelation will expose. Revelation will expose. Are the prophets of our science in you? Is there something silence in your marriage? Is there something silencing your family? Where is the anointing on your head? You cannot be a man of anointing and you are pushed from your place. Where is the oil on your head? Where is the oil on your head? Where is the oil on your head? If the oil is there, the oil has to speak. Do it again. If the anointing is there, the anointing has to speak. There are some people that need to be silenced. Everyone that needs to be silenced this morning. So that they can respect the anointing on your head. Yes! There has to be a connection. There 
There has I to be a connection. I can do anything. There has to I be a do. connection. I know. Yes, I can see people praying in the house. I know. I can I know. see people praying in the house. The one lives in and this morning, me. I, I give know. a decree. I can do everything that has locked your spirit down. The the let there be a release. I know. Yes, I let there be a release. I know. Let there be a release. Let there be a release. I know. I can Take your place anything. this morning. I know. Take your place this morning. I Take know. your place this morning. I know. I know. Yes, just release yourself to the spirit now because me. I can I see things begin to I happen. Can I can I see forces begin to align themselves now. Me. Yes. I know. If you are not respected, and there is anointing upon you. Aside after the revelation, they all bowed before him. Yes, <laughs> uh, if there is no difference, why is there anointing upon your head? If there is no difference, why are you claiming you know the God you serve? It comes, <laughs> it comes when you rule the line and you say, Oh. Are you tired of praying? Forget the sound. I want there to be a connection in your spirit to the reveal our secret this morning. The Bible says that Daniel, they went and they prayed and in the night there was a revelation. In the night there was a revelation. It was that revelation that made them to still be alive. That thing that is trying to destroy your life. That thing that is trying to destroy your dream. That thing that is trying to scatter what you are building. Just one revelation. Just one revelation. Just one revelation. That place you have been set aside to. Just one revelation. It can change everything this morning. It can change everything this morning. It can change everything this morning. Just one revelation. Just one revelation. Just one revelation. Mudekai. Just one revelation he had. Everything was changed. You want to tell the Lord this morning, Lord, you are the revealer of secrets. Lord, you are the revealer of secrets. Where is that revelation that will make me become premium? Where is that revelation that will change my story? Where is that revelation? Yes, thank you, Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, this morning, there's a reason why I'm here. I'm here because you cannot remain where you are. And I'm here on an assignment. There are people who have questioned your glory. And that questioning has lasted too long. They questioned Daniel. God answered for Daniel. I pray for you this morning. Wherever you are being questioned and people are asking, where is your God? I pray for you this morning. 
Wherever you have been sidelined and people are saying there is no grace, no anointing there again. Every gang up against you, I command confusion to come into the amends. Every gang up against your marriage, I command confusion to come into the amen. Every gang up against your family, I command confusion to come into the amen. Every gang up against your ministry, I command confusion to come into the amen. Every satanic gatekeeper that have shut the gates from you getting to your place of honor. Every satanic gatekeeper that has taken your file and they have hidden anything that concerns you and you've been out of record even for so long. They know that I am not here alone. There is the anointing by the grace of God that is upon my head. And when I come, of course, with the name of Jesus, they must obey. Therefore, I give a decree this morning. Every satanic gatekeeper that has been hindering you for so long, I command them to be dethroned. I command them to be dethroned. Every gate that should have been opened for you, that has been locked for so long, I command the gates to open. And as I live here today, I speak to your life. The revelation that will expose those familiar strangers around you. The revelation that will expose those strong men of evil around you. The same revelation that will empower you for the victory ahead. Receive that revelation. I said receive that revelation. In the name of Jesus. Where you have been set aside for so long. But people don't even know you exist again. Where you have been set aside for so long. And it is your works of old that are still speaking. But your present glory has been buried. Oh, I give a decree. Everything covering your glory. Everything resisting the flow of your glory. I command them to be banished. In the name of Jesus. Listen, revelation does not just come for you to take advantage of opportunities. Revelation eliminates the competition. Those that are struggling and frustrating you, when revelation comes, they bow before you. That was what happened to Daniel, Daniel chapter 2. The people that thought they knew, when the revelation came, they knew that their lives were tied to the revelation of Daniel. Therefore, I speak to your life this morning. Where you have been sidelined and set aside. And people that should be begging you, you have been begging them. Some of them have even taken over what belongs to you. The Bible says there is no enchantment against Israel. When God has blessed someone, nobody can utter anything contrary. And I stand as the anointed of the Lord. I speak to your life. As you live here today, be blessed. As you live here today, may your honor be restored back to you. Not just that. In warfare, somebody has to be under somebody. There cannot be two champions in a war. Therefore, I speak to you. Every battle you have been engaged in, and the enemies have been making you to bow before them. I decree an exchange right now. All those that need to submit and bow before you, as you live here today, they begin to bow before you. I said, may they begin to bow before you. Your helpers, wherever they are, I command them to lose their sleep for your sake. 
That was what happened to Daniel. <laughs> Uh, when he was thrown into the lion's den, the Bible says the king could not sleep. That was what happened to Mordecai. When the king had forgotten to honor him, one day came the king could not sleep. And the king woke up and said, go and bring me the records. Immediately they brought the record of Mordecai. Mordecai was promoted. Your helpers that have been sleeping. Those who the Lord has positioned in places that should have mentioned your name, that they have been quiet for so long. I give a final decree now. May they lose their sleep until you are honored. Are you afraid? I said, may they lose their sleep until you are honored. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.